wonderful episode today. Today, we're going to learn about thinking out of the box. That's right, kids. It's a special episode, packing and storing. One take. Ah, let's see. What, what, what's that? A public service announcement? Whoa, Fernando and Friends, Secure Packing and Storage. Whoa, that's handy. We pack them, stack them, and check them. I like that. Now that'll sell. Whoa, what's this? A subsidiary of the Woolsey Trust. Not bound by the laws of the United States, California, or decency. Woo! Oh, and... Packing supplies, compliments of Adam Glickman and Condomania? How incredibly thoughtful. Well, thank you, Adam. That is outstanding. Ah, a little out of breath there. That'll be my workout for the day. Okay, here we go. As you can see, the war room. Not at war, but a room. Outstanding. And we'll begin our show by talking about Packing. Of course, when you're packing, it's important to know what you're packing. Kids, packing boxes like this don't necessarily work because, as you can see, you can't close them. So it may make it difficult in transit. However, you can put a lot more stuff in the box. You just can't really close it. But because this is secure storage, I think it's a shit, right? Okay, so most of my belongings are in these boxes, but as you can see, for someone who started a media company, it's important to know, uh, well, you know, what kind of stuff you have, like cables, telephones. Power strips, because all that stuff's free. Car chargers. Uh, what is that? Cabling, computer cable, power strips, AV, of course, more stuff to come. Haven't gotten to sort that yet, and we're three weeks into this. Speakers. More cabling. Oh, and as well, thank you, Adam Glickman. For the kind donations bags here, and well, we said we weren't going to name names, but most of this merchandise came from Condomania. Oops, you know who works there? Um, there's bags of it. Anyway, I promise never to to name names. However, um, thank you, Louise. I would say there's an estimate of thousand. Maybe 1500 bucks worth of complimentary vibrators, sex toys, anything you could possibly think of, um, games. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for the boxes, Adam, part of our security system. This is what we call a audio alarm. <laughs> and this is a lock, compliments of Keeping Tom. Tom, thank you. Forgot that. Left that behind. He came and got the rest of my personal belongings. Uh, this is our. This man do that is watch. Hmm. Won't keep them out, but it'll wake me up when they get in. And would you lucky there? More boxes right outside of my door. How convenient. Let's see if we can figure out where these boxes came from. Let's see here. Storage room temperature, shipping, paradise marking. That would be Dennis Paradise, one of the largest suppliers of condoms on the planet. Paradise marketing is not sending me condoms, I can assure you. Um, nor is he sending me anything else, for that matter. This is a here. Chris May, not for me. But we have to thank Louise. Convenient for me to leave those right outside my door. Notice that I've left them there. I haven't really touched them until right now. 
don't use this entrance anymore. So we'll just go ahead and tidy this back up since I do suffer a little just paranoid. I don't know what you would call it. But anyway, when you got people coming in and out of your house, like Green Up Central Station, and you don't know it, you tend to be a little skeptical of things. And of course, no visible signs of entry lead one to believe that there has to be a way somebody could get in. Well, it seems as though this particular door here that's got that file down up at the top, you can see that right there, a little custom job. And of course, down at the bottom, that's not exactly stock. I don't think it rolls off the showroom. So the door doesn't necessarily work, although we have concocted a, another uh, more of an audio alarm. This will keep someone out, although a very thin kid could get in. I, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but for the purposes of demonstration, we know that that door will pop off the hinge because I did it. But how? Well, let me show you. This is a glass table. This is a very, very heavy frame. I'm going to just put this little jimahickey on there like that. You can see how I do this. Put that on there like that. And, oh, that's pretty stable. Wow, that is, look at that. Over a glass table, mind you. See, no tricks. Interesting, huh? Well, you're probably seeing yourself, that, what's that prove? Well, let's try something a little bit different. This, I'm gonna imagine this, this is a six by four dry erase board. Very, very heavy. Look at that. That's impressive. No tricks. A little suction cup. Off it comes. Not high tech. Whoop. And lastly, not to bore anyone, very, very expensive piece of fine art. Tom, of course, wanted it. See, there's the blue sticker. You'll see those blue stickers throughout the film. No, I didn't put those there, but uh, we'll get to that later. This, I'm going to just be careful here, but as you can see, uh, yes, he's lifted it up and off. So, I hope that demonstrates it. Anybody with a little ingenuity and notice, not really any fingerprints either. That's pretty impressive. That's what they in law enforcement call uh, no signs of <clears throat> forced entry. So we've made some good progress, as you can see, moving forward. Our packing special episode. Um, unpacking my clothes, as you can see, some more belongings, um, boxes specially packed just for this secure move. And let's see, up, oh, up, oh, whoa, what do you know? Packing gun, well that's handy. Let's see, mail order. I don't own a mail order company. I tried, not really sure what that is. That was donated uh, to me by Tom. Um, and just continuing now, you can see the hog lamp has grown slightly. Um, I don't have that problem, so that's, I've never purchased that, it's not mine, I don't know what it was doing here, but anyway, um, those are black sweatpants, I don't know for sure, but I would bet that those sweatpants may have been worn by someone, never mind, um, and this, well, we all need this, this is a Mentos gum container, <coughs> I don't eat Mentos, never bought Mentos, and I don't carry around a syringe <clears throat> in my Mentos container like others. However, there you go. Nice, huh? <coughs> Pardon me. So, just to give you a quick uh, project update, as you can see, I've made considerable traction in the kitchen. Oh, actually, you can't see that here. There you go. Coming along, getting clean, floors clean. And I think this way, this way, this way, this way. I gotta bang all this out today so I can finish cleaning or straighten or finding my stuff anyway. So yeah, you can see I've made some progress. Still a lot of cables and cords to go. More boxes taped all the way up to the top. You can see um, 
just to give you an idea, um, those belongings down there, those were the contents of my desk. Don't need that stuff. Um, what else? There's some other very interesting. Uh, uh, the paper shredder, ironically, is all the way in the back and at the bottom. So are the printers. Um, and anyway, the point that I'm getting at, some of the items that were stowed as far possible away as can be imagined were all the way in the back, including the video library, knowing that I don't have anything to watch. And my clothes, all of these drawers were out of this dresser, and so were all of the clothes, yet some clothes got put back in. I don't, I don't know how that happened. In this drawer, um, the contents of this drawer actually... Um, went up here. That's why I know that they were taken out and put back in, or rearranged for that matter. Regardless, who in the hell made that decision, and who touched my stuff? And who who was responsible for deciding what was trash and what was not? That is what I want to know. Who determined what was trash and what was not? <coughs> not trash. Trash. You got it backwards. Moving on. This is soap. For some strange reason, I have been given a lot of soap. I don't know why. I have my own soap. But something tells me the soap has to do with keeping yourself clean, <coughs> which could have something to do with doing laundry at 3 in the morning. I don't do laundry at 3 in the morning. Maybe you do. As you can see, clean. You should have seen this before. Actually, the pictures are phenomenal. This room as well, I want to say stacked. Well, you'll see. You know, the pictures right there. All the way forward to saying this was where all of my paperwork was. That, as you can see, I've started to dig it out. However, the bulk of paperwork, including my identity theft documents, um, all of the return mail, sender certified mail, um, Seats, bills, settlements, uh, just anything someone would need to continue cleaning up their identity uh, is located down there. We're going to get to that today. Just found that. And sorry to take you in circles. Back right here. This box, I'll have you know, is packed from the ground up with paperwork. Very, very heavy. As a matter of fact, I almost killed myself and knocked it over getting it down. Back to the soap. Why soap? I don't know. Moving on. Cover that. Ah, uh, the Hall of Mirrors. I'm going to take a quick break and we'll get right back to you. <laughs> 